Hello, everyone. Welcome to science class. This is Mr. Vallejo. And today we will look at, be looking at an introduction to environmental science. So let's go ahead and go to the screen share and get started with today's talk. Again, this is called Introduction to Environmental Science. This is based on Cunningham and Cunningham's Environmental Science, a Global Concern textbook. So as we take a look at environmental uh, science throughout this course, we, of course, are looking to understand the environment in which we live. In today's talk, we'll be taking a look at these topics and current conditions the historical perspectives, uh, four major ones in environmental science, uh, a divided world, which has to do with the haves and the have nots. Is this development sustainable? Can we keep it going? What's happening to the indigenous people of the world? And ethics and justice are issues that are typically studied in an environmental science class or even course of study that we don't typically look at in uh, other fields of science like biology, chemistry, or physics. And that also includes environmental racism. All righty, so in environmental studies, environmental science, I'm glad you're in this course, or maybe you're taking a, uh, you know, a section, a unit in, in ecology or environmental studies in your, your biology or marine biology course. Um, whatever course you're taking, humans have always inhabited both a natural world and a social world, and so, in environmental studies, we try to incorporate the latter, the social world, in our study of the natural world. Now, what is the environment? Well, the environment is circumstances or conditions that surround an organism or a group of organisms. Now, we uh, often talk about the abiotic conditions, which are the conditions of the non-living world such as sunlight or dissolved oxygen content in a lake or a river or stream or the ocean. Uh, it might be uh, the amount of minerals that are in, uh, in uh, the upwelling from the uh, bottom of the ocean. So there are many abiotic conditions. Biotic conditions may have, be things that, that include interactions between between living things like between predator and prey, uh, even interest specific like between um, two males of the same species competing for the right to mate. So uh, these are these abiotic and biotic conditions are circumstances that surround directly an organism or a group of organisms. But environmental studies, we also realize that there is a uh, complex of social or cultural conditions that also affect a, an individual or community. It's not just the biotic or abiotic conditions. It's also the interaction of the organisms on a social level, on a cultural level that are important to study and recognize and take into account when planning. So environmental studies is a systematic study of our environment and our proper place in it. Okay, so because of that last phrase, environmental studies uh, incorporates information from other aspects of uh, other courses or other lines of study, not just the natural sciences, but also the social sciences. 
also humanities. Um, some things have uh, a, a, a value just because they exist. Some are, uh, are valuable because they are pleasing to the eye or the ear. So they have some type of aesthetic value. So not just the uh, social studies, including uh, sociology and psychology, but the humanities and uh, art, uh, visual art and music all play a part in the study of environmental science. Environmental science is focused on understanding and resolving environmental problems that humans themselves have created. So as you take a look at this diagram here, it says here many kinds of knowledge contribute to our understanding in environmental science. And this is just for one, uh, the, the examples are for, for uh, one topic. If you look in the center, it says the goal is clean energy in the future. But all of these questions need to be addressed as we consider clean energy for the future. It's not just about engineering. Can we design better vehicles? Okay, but it's also ecology. How does energy production affect populations? That's important to know. We might study that in biology. But look, also economics, what, is it, what are the costs? What are the benefits if we uh, pursue this? Um, will people actually do it? Sociology. Um, how do we do it in chemistry? So there are many, many aspects of uh, different topics, different uh, concerns that we address in environmental science. But all of these uh, goals and topics have multiple uh, places where information is gathered and considered when forming the solution to the problem. Uh, it was said in the 90s, I remember, the biggest problem with the earth, the biggest environmental or ecological problem is that there are too many people on earth and we have over 7 billion people at the time of this, uh, this election, there are over 325 million people in the United States. One out of every six people are Chinese. One out of every six people are Indian. We have a lot of people on earth. And because we have a lot of people on earth, there are lots of different problems. Climate change, burning fossil fuels causes global climate change. That is happening. Is it cyclic? Or is it something that we need to uh, address right away? More and more people are saying, yes, it is. And we need to do something about it for future generations. Uh, what about hunger? People are starving in different parts of the world. Even in our backyards, there are people who don't have enough food uh, or people who have food insecurity. Food is inequitably distributed across the globe and two thirds of the agricultural lands show signs of degradation. Wow, so we need more food uh, distributed uh, more equally, even though the lands are not as productive. So it's a problem that needs to be addressed. Clean water may be the most critical resource in the 21st century out of all the water on Earth. Only about 1% of it is usable for us uh, humans as a society, as individuals. Um, only 1% is available for use. How do we increase that number? How do we get it to the places that don't have it yet? Clean water. Energy fossil fuels use, use causes pollution. There's a shift to using more renewable energy resources. Have you done it yet? Uh, do you have an electric car? Do you have solar panels on your house? And for me, the answer is no and no. And so sometimes with eco, ecological environmental 
issues that it has to do with costs. Can you afford to do it? Can you afford to drive a, an electric car? Can you afford to purchase a new electric car when you have a working uh, gasoline engine in your car? Um, how much does it cost to get solar panels on your roof and how long does it take to make that money back? You're not gonna be in that particular house for long. Maybe it's not worth it. Um, or maybe the, the turnaround time is uh, to make your money back is too long. No, it's not worth it. So it needs to be um, economically feasible in order to get some of these things going. Uh, another question, government, does government uh, help with this? Do other government incentives or government incentives necessary? Am I in favor of raising taxes to create the opportunity for government incentives? for people who make less salary than I do. Um, These are all questions and uh, concerns for, for energy. And so remember in environmental science, there's not just the, the hard facts, but there's also the, uh, the, the correct thing to do, the ethical thing to do, the equitable thing to do. These are all considerations when studying environmental science. And then biodiversity loss, I remember in the 1990s, this was something that was a, a really big concern. It's even worse now. Um, and it says here, species are being lost at a rapid rate. In fact, my current read is a book called The Sixth Extinction. And so we have had five major extinctions in this history in the history of life on Earth. And it is likely we are in the middle of the sixth extinction. Air pollution, air quality has worsened dramatically in many areas. I, for one, live in an area that is well known in the United States as having some, if not the worst, pollution um, in the country. As far as air pollution goes, I, I live near, I live in the Los Angeles metropolis. I live in the uh, northern, actually the northwestern uh, region of the, uh, the metro region. And uh, so uh, I actually used to live in the worst uh, polluted area called the San Fernando Valley. And when, uh, when my son was young, he was asthmatic. We moved uh, to uh, where we live now so that we could have better air for him. And so air pollution is certainly a current condition that is directly due to a large human population. All right. But there are signs of hope. Progress has been made on on many fronts. Cities are more livable today, especially in underdeveloped countries and a century ago due to human birth rate stabilization and clean technology use. Um, plumbing, for example, even things that we sometimes take for granted in, uh, in developed countries. Health incidence of life-threatening diseases has been reduced in most countries, not just COVID, but other things. Um, you know, that uh, diseases that were known to wipe out people many, many years ago are much better now. And so uh, when people are looking when, uh, to retire, uh, when an American is looking to retire and considering other places, even other countries, one of their concerns is how is the health uh, care in fill in the blank country. Is it decent? Is it worth it? And I live in that country and not be concerned that I will uh, not be able to get quality uh, medical care. Oh. Uh, information, education. Education is uh, something that is often said that uh, uh, education is the, the, uh, the, the road out of poverty. Um, and uh, education is ex expanding access to knowledge is essential to progress. 
So especially with the internet and uh, the development of, of the uh, internet and the information age, you certainly are able to access much information if you have internet access. Not everyone does. Sustainable resource use and habitat conservation, especially in the TRF and the tropical rainforest, um, uh, that's notable. Uh, again, in the 90s, there was something called the slash and, and burn technique. And what they would do is they would go to the tropical rainforest and cut down trees and burn uh, those trees and then dig the, the ash back into the soil so that the soil has some minerals in it. And then that area would be good for agriculture for a few years. And then uh, the tropical soil is not terribly uh, fertile soil. So then you gotta move somewhere else and do it all over again. So not so much now, it's in the 90s. And uh, more and more people are uh, <clears throat> aware of habitats and how uh, protection of habitats of endangered or threatened species is important. And so sustainable resource use and habitat conservation certainly has increased in recent times. Renewable energy progress is being made in transition to renewable energy sources. Is it going fast enough? Uh, again, do we, do we continue to offer government incentives for people to switch over from, say, uh, so, uh, hydrothermal uh, electric resources to, to solar panels, you know, renewable energy. Carbon markets and standards cap and trade programs help limit greenhouse gas emissions, carbon dioxide directly associated with global warming. Um, people are aware of their carbon footprint today and uh, laws and regulations and cap and trade programs are essential in making companies aware and uh, enforcing uh, the, uh, the mandate to reduce those carbon emissions. And international cooperation, some international environmental protection agreements have been highly successful while uh, there's lack enforcement um, for air pollution, of course, is the, the uh, Montreal Protocol. It had to do with the improvement of the situation and help to reduce acid rain situations in the north, uh, northeastern United States and New England and such, and more so in Canada because they feel like, like uh, factory emissions from the Ohio River Valley area. Um, all the way up to Pittsburgh, they, all that would uh, go into the air and travel hundreds of miles to the most populous section of Canada. And then that rain that was coming down would, um, would be you know, more acidic than, uh, than typical. 